What's going on, hockey fans? It's the good old hockey podcast, your go-to place for all hockey news. NHL, NCAA, junior hockey, international hockey. We got it all covered. You can follow us on Instagram, X, TikTok, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button on YouTube. You can listen to us on all podcast platforms. So sit back and enjoy the episode. All right, welcome back, everybody. This is the Good Old Hockey Podcast. This is episode number 25. We are 25 weeks into the NHL season. Crazy. It is wrapping up as we, you know, keep on going. We got about 15 days left, I believe, of the regular season. Um, It's a little bittersweet. I don't know. What do you think, Allie? I think it's kind of bittersweet where I'm excited, but I know that it's going to come to an end pretty soon. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, it's it's a little bit bittersweet. I mean, it's been such a whirlwind of a season. I mean, I feel like there's been more drama this season. And I don't know if that's just the presence of social media and all sorts yeah. of stuff that NHL is doing, player assistant program. Uh, I feel like the biggest banger of story was started off with the Bedard, the biggest yeah. prospect. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, it's bittersweet, but you know, I am so, and I mean so excited for the playoffs yeah. and excited for the lottery draft. I know yeah. both uh, both of our teams are are out of the yep. playoff contention, but um, yeah, I mean, it's it's cool first season covering you know the yep. the season very in depth and um yeah man I, I wonder if there's going to be more excitement for seasons to come or if this is like the peak yeah I don't know we'll see I mean I feel like just with social media and I I don't know I feel like this is just the start if anything um I yeah feel like I don't know hockey we just never really talked about in terms of like drama and stuff and this season has been crazy. I feel like it could be fun once playoffs are over and, you know, once we've talked whoever wins the Stanley Cup um, to do like a recap of just all the drama and some of the stories look back on this season because it has been crazy. Um, yeah, 100%. I mean, and I would say like, I feel like the biggest thing past couple of years that's really ramped up the coverage of hockey is like ENT and ESPN getting that. Even though I have some criticism on ESPN covering the NHL, they those are two humongous sports corporations so i feel like they've really grown the sport and shit they've upped the salary cap because of them probably so yeah no i agree yeah i feel like it's yeah it's been a fun season to you know watch everything i mean espn plus they could do better i wish we got more of the like the frozen frenzy we got in the beginning of the season and then what now i know you haven't we haven't heard about it or they haven't talked about it at all. They talked about doing it next season. And I'm like, who cares about, like, do it this season again? But, you know, it was a cool thing to see. And I think it's good for the sport. So, you know, if it got, who knows, maybe next season they'll do too. But I think, I think they need to, like, schedule it around times where people are, are free. Like, they should do one on President's Day. They should do one on Thanksgiving. They should do one on Opening Day. They should do one, like, fucking St. Patty's Day. I mean, oh, yeah. just get like get like three or four of them in the season. Yeah. I feel like that's so good for the sport. But yeah. um, you know, also I'm, they should put it on ESPN, biggest you know platform yeah. for sports on TV. So I think the problem with that though, March Mat or yeah, March Madness is usually around St. Patty's Day. That kind of sucks. Um, but yeah, it's not definitely. always it's not always like that though. Like I don't know. I feel like St. Patty's Day would be a cool one. Thanksgiving is tough because you got to rival football. But yeah, the only way to beat them out is to you know, just do it. And, you know, maybe yeah. people keep watching football and they're like, God, these games are boring. And they switched over and it's hockey all day, um, you know, doing the frozen frenzy. So I, yeah, I think that's a good idea. They just got to execute it. Um, but that being said, before we get into our three stars yeah. and something else, how was your weekend? Weekend was good. Uh, I went hard in the paint on Friday night. You should have came out to downtown radio with us. Mean- I, was I know I, I missed the 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 send you guys did a couple weekends yeah. ago when I was in Canada, but yeah, dude, downtown downtown Meridian took the best of me on on Friday. I was hungover as fuck on Saturday, yeah. so that kind of put me out of commission on Saturday. Um, but then Sunday, I was like, you know what? I don't want to Monday my Sunday, so went on a little hike, had a nice Easter <laughs> dinner with my with my brother and nice. his girlfriend, my girlfriend. And yeah, it was it was it was a chill weekend. Yeah. Uh, you know, trying to save some money since I owe some money to the IRS. But yeah, how was how was your weekend? Yeah, no, it was good. Uh, we took it pretty easy. Friday, I don't even think we went out or did anything. I think we just stayed home. <laughs> well, actually, I went to this place off of Federal by Fred Meyer called Stubbs. Shout out to them. 
pretty pretty good spot. It's a little sports bar in there. Got some good wings there. I will say though, I ordered a pound of wings and they only gave me like six. And I was like, this is not, this is not a pound of wings. I know that for a fact. Dude, yeah, so Stubbs ain't bad. I've been there it's before. Good. It's yeah. it's a decent spot. And then Saturday, we went to end zone for a bit and then people were trying to get us to go downtown. And I'm like, nope. I said this is a chill weekend on both the bank account and my brain. And we went home. Crap. I think we watched the movie or something. Oh, no, we watched some Entourage, and then, uh, yeah, I went to bed. Sunday, Easter, yeah, yesterday, pretty good Easter. It was fun. Hung out with the parents. Um, nice. You know, a good weekend. But I also, I dude, I also got a new house, new lease that's really close to Boise. Really? Like, it's in it's in the same neighborhood as you guys are, so I'm stoked no on that. Hell, yeah. We'll be able to walk. Dude, okay, um, I was talking to Zach about this. He lives, obviously, in California now. But mm -hmm. uh, we were saying how last year we had so much fun watching the playoffs because we were all watching together. So when do you move into the new house? Dude, I move in April 15th is when our, our lease oh. starts. I mean, my lease here at my current house in Meridian ends April 30th. So okay. you got it's probably going to be anywhere in between there. Probably yeah. going to slowly move stuff over there. But yep. yeah, dude, I'm beyond stoked to move back to that area. And yeah. It's a small little quaint house. It was built like a hundred fucking years ago, but Damn. you know, it will, it will do for two people. So yeah, no, totally. Yeah. So you should definitely come by. We'll watch some hockey. Um, maybe live stream some of the games and stuff. Maybe put a little bets on the overs or something like that. We'll have fun. But that being said, Oh, another thing I did this weekend was watch the frozen four. Um, or I guess the regional finals, man, those games were fun. Uh, my favorite was the Quinnipiac and Boston college one. Um, yeah dude what was another denver and the cold no denver and umass Den was a good game too that was first round yeah that game went into overtime i watched that one but the bc one man that first of all ryan leonard is a goat uh he's so clutch like i don't even know i mean he didn't score any final goal but he yeah he's I don't good know what about him he's yeah i think he's he's gonna be a star um cool to see will smith play um i don't know part of me that michigan hope, michigan state game was good too that was a good game too yeah i don't know what you saw to will smith but like he's good don't get me wrong i think he's gonna win hobie baker i hope he wins it i think he needs another year though in college before he comes over to the sharks Interesting. i don't know it's like he he's not a bad player or at all yeah but he's also he's benefited from a really good line and you know, it's not to say that he isn't deserving of any of it, but, you know, when you, I don't think that he's ready to come to play for a bad team like the Sharks. Yeah. You know, I think he could. Be Even good. if they get Macklin? I mean, I guess that's a different story. If Macklin, it's the, <laughs> even then though, I mean, I don't think he's going to stay another year. Macklin won't, but I guess we'll see after the finals. I mean, I think if him and Celebrini, it depends though, if they play each other in the finals and they're, Gonna be rivals. That'll be a con a funny uh, you know, like it'll be a funny dynamic when they come back that they were like just rivals and then now the next season they're playing together on the same team. Yeah, I'd be surprised if he stays another year in college just because I mean he was the first round draft pick last year. I mean he's got a year I, I mean I, I mean top five draft pick too. So yeah. I feel like he's gonna get a spot out of the, in the training camp if he this, if his agent he decides to do that, I mean, the, yeah. they could totally be thinking the same thing as you and one yeah. another year of development. But yeah, um, I don't. I mean, I don't know. They they he, they need something to get sharks fans excited and come to the games. They do. You know? <laughs> I know there's not much. <laughs> you know, I can take I can take another two years of heartbreak and just pull out like just watching other teams. Like, no offense, to the sharks I'll always root for them, but you know, I'm not gonna rush to go watch their games at all right now um you know i'll watch them if i have time but i'm not gonna there's nothing like really appealing to watch that team like at all uh so <laughs> it is tough i'd love to see him play next year i think it'd give you know a little more excitement to watch him but i'm also not rush i don't we don't need to rush anything we can take our time let him develop uh celebrini if he does become a shark we'll see if that happens i think around may but i don't know about that what did you think of the Frozen Four? Like, what was your favorite game that you watched? Dude, I I mean, you said that BC 
Quinnipiac. I mean, that game went into overtime. Yeah. Wasn't that one of them? Yeah, that that one was electric. I just feel like that was that could have gone either way. I was really surprised Quinnipiac kept it up and brought it into OT. Um, but I mean, they're just defending national champions, so yeah. it's pretty hard to knock them off. But I also like that Michigan-Michigan State game. I thought Michigan State had that in the bag. I mean, Michigan State's been pretty dominant this whole year. Yeah. Um, but for Michigan to pull that out, I mean, I did not expect that at all. Um, yeah. But those were those were two games that, that definitely stuck out to me. Um, I'm really excited for for the four frozen four matchups so oh yeah honestly i i feel like bu bc is gonna just happen it's inevitable in the final that's gonna be such a good final game um but yeah i thought i thought the storyline like you said with quinnipiac being defending champions and then bc the number one team in college hockey was it's just one of those it's a great storyline um yeah game to watch and obviously that game it was incredible it could have gone either way i mean BC, I noticed they had a tough time getting it into the zone in the third period. Um, but all it takes is one goal, and they scored and went to overtime, and you know how the story ends. But yeah, it's crazy overall, that Denver Denver had such a close game against Cornell too. Yes, it was a pretty good did. game. I didn't really see too much of it, but I mean, shit for Cornell to hang in there with a powerhouse like that. Oh yeah, that's decent. And speaking of, we we're literally perfect on our Frozen Four prediction it's too. True. Yeah, if you watched last week's episode, you watched us flip a coin for some of those picks. And you know what? <laughs> Wins are right. So we'll see how far it goes. Um, I don't know. Speaking of brackets, I do want to shout out that my March Madness bracket has officially been busted. I'm done. Done for. My team, Same. Tennessee, lost. <laughs> Same with you. Houston lost. So, yeah. So brutal. It is brutal. But we got a bright <laughs> spot in the Frozen Four that we've got a perfect bracket right now. So, you know what? I'll hold on to that. We do, but, we do. A little bit easier to predict that, but yeah. dude, if we if we get this Frozen Four right, we're gonna be boasting about it. Oh yeah, that's going on the the socials. Also, if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram at Good Old Hockey Podcast. Galley got that started up for us. Um, you know, we've been cranking out some, whether it's graphics or reels, anything like that. We just want you guys to get in on the conversation as well with us. Yeah. Comment, start it, start yeah. a discussion. A bunch of hockey people are going to be, you know, in these discussions, all sorts of different fans. You can give us shit. You can talk shit on our picks and yeah, our, our takes and or talk yeah. shit to other people in the comments. We're, we're all about that. Yep. Trying to build a hockey community uh, from this page. Sure. So I'm pretty excited yeah. about it. I am too. Yeah, it'll be fun. Um, and good job on that because that was, yeah, it was a good execute, execution. And yeah, we got actually already over 100 followers the first in the first week it's been up so good shit on that but with that being said let's get into some nhl talk oh yeah That's why we're here three stars of the week <laughs> up first we've got Connor mcdavid three games played he had three goals five assists eight points he is this is the second time being the first star of the week this year um also he was at one point in the lead for scoring and i want to say like after the first 15 games it's crazy. or something, he was like tied for 30th or some, like he was tied, he was way down there in points. And I was like, oh my God, he's like going to have an off year this year. Somehow, I mean, it's McDavid, but I don't know. He, I just, yeah, I feel like that shows his dominance. Like does. slow start, shitty team, shitty defense. Yeah. He doesn't <laughs> give a fuck. I mean, he's going to yeah. take the league lead yeah. in points. Um, I mean, I know it's pretty close, but I mean, he's two points away from McKinnon, who's in the league, which, I mean, all three of those players, McKinnon, Kucherov, and, and McDavid are just, what the fuck, man? They're on something yeah. else this season. I mean, those all, all three of those players are could potentially hit 150 points, which we haven't seen probably since the 90s. Yeah, I think, I forget what, see, I think it was 92, the last time we've had this many 125-point players, so. Jeez. Yeah. It's it's a crazy season. Uh, you know, I think last year we had a pretty good high record of players with over a hundred points and you know, this season's no different. So I don't know, it's been a fun season to watch. He well deserves that first spot. Oh yeah. Um second spot, Logan Thompson, Vegas Golden Knights. <laughs> you can talk about this guy. I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> oh well, Logan Thompson, just just to begin. My goodness, man. I mean, 3-0, three, no, three games played, 0.971 save percentage, 0.98 goals against yeah. average. Yeah. Um, 
mean, he's been 5-0-1 in his last six starts. Um, I mean, he's pushing for that number one goalie spot. Um, I think Aiden Hill is injured right now. But, I mean, of course, this is such the Golden Knights, like, luck for them to be just, you know, kind of mediocre in the past yeah. half of the season. Yep. Um, and then, you know, they get gifted with this goalie out of nowhere that's playing crazy. So I feel like I can already see yeah. the future of this guy playing <laughs> lights out in the, the playoffs, knocking you know, people out, yeah, all sorts of shit. <laughs> I don't know. Logan Thompson, like, he... He got hurt last playoffs. That's why Aiden Hill stepped in, I believe. No, it was Logan Brassois that got hurt. Logan Thompson's kind of been like in and out. But anyways, now, of course, the Aiden Hill's out. Now he's able to shine. Again, I just, I, you know, I don't even want to talk about the Knights because my blood pressure is going to rise. So we're moving on. Next one, Alexi Lafreniere, third star. You know, I think this is the first time he's ever been mentioned as a star. Yeah. Um, in any of this stuff, you know, he was, what, first round pick in 2020. This last week, he had three games played, five goals, two assists, 52 points this season, which is not great out of a first-round pick who's been in the league for four years. Um, I don't know. Do you think he's a bust? Would you cl clarify, cl classify uh, him as a bust? It's hard to say. I feel like for first overall pick, though, and for how hyped he was, he was so hyped was. before he got yeah. drafted. I mean, people yeah. were saying, like, this guy's, like, on par with, like, McDavid, Crosby. Yeah. Also, I mean, there's some pretty crazy comparisons, and he was a great junior hockey player. But, um, I, I mean, I think he's a bust still. I mean, mm -hmm. good job for getting the third star of the week. <laughs> but uh, I think I do think that like this season is it's going to be and how he plays in the playoffs too. It's going to tell a lot. I mean, if the Rangers get an early exit, it's going to be that's going to be tough for him, um, especially. Yeah. But if he's able to shine in the playoffs, I think um, he could prove me wrong. And yeah. he could show that he's he's a lot more than uh, just like a fifty point player. And I think this is this could be the start of Alexis Lafreniere because he's been lights out, and he's you can you can notice him when he's on the ice. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I it's hard to compare. Like I was thinking of someone like Tage Thompson or someone that you know kind of had a slow start, but Tage was like he was later in the draft. He wasn't a first overall pick. You know, it took Tage some time to kind of get used to playing in the NHL and maybe Lafreniere has the same type of uh, trajectory where it maybe just takes him a little bit more time, but yeah. we'll see, you know, I think next season is going to be a big season for him depending on, you know, what happens, but 100%. Uh, who will finish with the most first stars? Do you think? Because as of right now, Kaprizov, he's got three Matthews has three Kucherov has three McKinnon and McDavid have two. See, that's it's this is like so random. Who knows? I mean, who's gonna have who's gonna have the best week, best yeah. week in the next two weeks? Yeah. Um, and it's totally, totally could be Cooch, Matthews, or Kaprizov. I don't think it's gonna be Kaprizov. I honestly think Austin Matthews might take it. I think he's gonna really turn it up and try to try to surpass that sixty five goal mark. So yeah, I think he would probably take a, a first star of the week if if he does that. Yeah, I think so too. If he can pass that which we've talked about just him passing Ovechkin um with like the most goals in the salary cap era which is funny cuz everyone's covering it now but we talked about this like 2 months ago so if you want the first scoop of anything come to us <laughs> but yeah i think matthews is i feel like he's destined to kind of get that um that fourth one i don't know though kucherov he's kind of sneaky too but i'm going to pick matthews as well so um more Matthews glazing. We'll probably get some shit for that. Yeah, I know. I, I can't I can't ever please anyone. I'm either a Matthews hater or a glazer, <laughs> so I don't even know what the fuck to do. But uh, up next, Zach Hyman. He just hit 52 goals, 50 goals. He's a 50-goal scorer in the NHL, which is crazy. Yeah, um, what? I think part of it has to do with the fact that he's playing with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Let's be honest there. Um, but, Gal, you didn't see this, but on NHL Twitter... Not like the, you know, just like the subsection of Twitter of NHL fans. There was a reporter, dipshit reporter, might I add. Um, let me find his name so I can call him out and call him a dumbass. Andrew Berkshire, <laughs> hockey analyst, writer, and more stuff too. After Zach Hyman scored 50 goals, he went on Twitter to say that Zach Hyman isn't deserving of any of this because his parents were rich 
So he was privileged and that's why he got 50 goals because his parents were rich. So now anytime Zach Hyman scores, people are like, thank God for rich parents of Zach Hyman, whatever. Like, honestly, that whole take, you know, what, regardless of what you think, sure. Like yeah, like, yeah, if you're rich, you maybe have a step up in life or certain things like that. But it's not, doesn't translate directly to the NHL. Like, I don't know. I It just is such a slap in the face to the hard work that a lot of these guys put in. Yeah. Um, and I feel like, if anything, like, I feel like in sports, professional sports, I feel like names carry a lot of weight. Like, if you're... If you're fucking Goretzky or if you're a McDavid, future McDavid kids out there um, or future Crosby kid out there, I mean, holy shit. I mean, people are going to be all over. That's going to give you a step up. But yeah. I mean, I think there's countless numbers of kids who came from rich families that maybe didn't even crack professional hockey or junior no. hockey at all. So I, I feel like that's such a bullshit take. Whoever is attributing a 50 goal season, which is, yeah. I don't know, a, a few not a lot of players do hit that in their career so it's that's a very impressive feat and that's that's a that's a jackass take from whoever yeah <laughs> it's, no, it's he's fucked. second he's second in the league for scoring yeah quietly quiet yeah. second in the league for yeah. scoring who's um, is reinhardt third now then yeah i think reinhardt has 51 so reinhardt also has 50 goals i mean 50 goal seasons hand and out rich you might have a probably. yeah you might have a 65 plus goal season coming from matthews so yeah um, lots of goal scoring, lots of point scoring. I mean, gotta love it, dude. Yeah, no, I gotta love it. But yeah, I thought that was when you wrote that on our agenda. I just had to bring that up for that fucking dipshit <laughs> saying that. Um, but we also did get some teams this last week clinching the playoffs, which is not a first. But I mean, I don't know. It wasn't super early. But <clears throat> anyways, first team was the Rangers. Um, first team in the West was the Stars. But as of right now, we've got the Rangers, Bruins, Panthers, Hurricanes, Stars, Avalanche, and Canucks all clinched in the playoffs. I mean, I think out of this list, in terms of beginning of the season, I was wrong on about the Bruins, Panthers, yeah, and probably the Canucks too. About yeah, them. I feel like I was wrong about the Hurricanes too. Yeah, um, yeah, and too. those teams you just said. Um, yeah, I mean. I just wanted to add that in there because teams are starting to clinch. Playoff matchups are starting to come come a little bit more apparent. Yep. Um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how who wins the President's Trophy. As of right now, what are the standings looking Dude, like for, 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 for sure league-wide? The Rangers are number I, one right now, 104. Yeah, 104. So, I mean, any of those... Stars I mean, are shit, 103. Dude. Any of those teams, I mean, the the Avs are six in the league, and they're only four points behind the the Rangers. So, I mean, yeah, any of those six, seven, even Florida's at ninety nine. Yeah, they're at yeah nine points. Oh my God, Edmonton's ninety four. Holy crap! Yeah, that's that's a turnaround and a half. <laughs> Speaking of turnarounds, we were talking so much shit on the Oilers. They might miss yeah. the playoffs. I know me, I have a little bit of bias, but that yeah. was a turnaround and a half of a season. So, yeah. No. Um, I mean, good on the Oilers management to have that yeah. to have that coaching change and and just ramp yeah. shit up like like they did. Um, and good on McDavid. I mean, that's some excellent like leadership for him to to you know pick a team out of the ashes and bottom yeah. of the standings and and really bring it into something impressive. And that shows yeah. the type of leader he is. But hey, still still no cups to his name. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Same with Matthews though. He ain't gonna ever get one, especially if he's with the Leafs. Um, okay, enough <laughs> Leaf hating. We're going to get shit in the comments. But, um, I mean, honestly, my favorite out of all these teams in terms of, I don't know, a deep run, I'm going to go with the Panthers again. <clears throat> I mean, last year they were unstoppable. And, you know, I don't think that they lost a whole lot. They did gain a good amount. So, they again, they just have to have solid playoff Bob back. But, I don't know. I want to see I that first round matchup against the Bruins. Dude, I feel like the Rangers are our house right now, and they have been all season. Yeah, and I yeah. feel like they were kind, they were somewhat of a team to beat last year, but I feel like this year they're going to come in with vengeance. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're the team for me to watch out of the East, but out of these teams, I mean, that I've clinched so far, I think the Avalanche are also playing lights out. Yeah. McKinnon's firing. I mean, yeah. great goaltending so far. So um, 
I mean, I really think the Avalanche are a team to watch and I feel like they are going to continue to be a team to watch for the next decade, probably. Yep. Um, but yeah, dude, I'm so stoked for the playoffs. I'm very, ex- I'm excited to see what happens in the central division, like how that yeah. fizzles out too. How that plays out. And honestly, the Atlantic as well. I'm excited yeah. for because that one through three spot, even like the Maple Leafs, Panthers and Bruins, I feel like the Bruins are going to be one again, two and three will be, uh, Panthers and Leafs, I think the Panthers are going to take that pretty easily. You can clip this. Again, I might be biting my own words right now, but <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty good win for the Panthers there, and they're going to play Boston in the second round. That's going to be a great second round as well. But I don't know. I feel like it's too hard to say, though. Like, I hate giving, you know, people always ask, like, oh, what's your, who do you think is going to win? And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I truly don't know. I cannot give you a good answer because it's playoff hockey and anything can happen. There's no Philadelphia, dude. Yeah, they could. <laughs> Realistically, who knows? With John Tortorella as their coach, they could go. He's like uh, or Brooks. Um, that would that would and... be fucking crazy if yeah. Philadelphia won. I feel like the whole hockey world would like self destruct. Oh yeah, they'd if collapse. Philadelphia won, or dude, like somehow like the Predators fucking win. Like you know, I don't. I mean, I mean th- that happens a lot of this, like a lot of playoff yeah. seasons. I mean, they it comes around. It's like team the least team you'd expect somehow yeah. makes a deep run. That was the Panthers like, last what, year. What the fuck? Yeah, exactly. They, they're. I mean, the Predators kind of remind me a bit of how the Panthers were last year, just in the sense of you know they're fighting for pushing for a playoff spot. Um, I I guess it was a little bit tighter for the Panthers last year. It came down to like the last couple games, but I mean, when you're on a roll like that, it carries over into the playoffs. It's it's real. Um, so you know, I feel like yeah. they could get out of the first round depending on who they play. But I don't know. Most definitely Enough on that. So, was this coming out Wednesday? Yesterday, Tuesday, Jeff Skinner <laughs> played in his 1,000th career game. Which, first of all, applause to you, brother. Um, it's crazy. That's no, yeah, that's no easy feat. Um, he also looks like he's 12 still, so it's kind of weird that he's playing a thousand games. He still looks like a baby. But I saw a stat that kind of blew my mind. I I guess I've kind of always known this, but now that he's hit a thousand, it's kind of crazy. Jeff Skinner's never played in a playoff game in his life. In his thousand yeah. game career, he has never played in a playoff in, game. In the NHL. In the NHL. In the NHL. We'll give him yes. that. Okay. Correct. In the NHL. But <laughs> He so when he joined the Hurricanes back in 2010, 2011, one of the seasons, maybe flip flopped, but the Hurricanes made the playoffs the year before he joined the team or started playing. And then for that nine year stint he played with the Hurricanes or however long, the Hurricanes never made the playoffs. He went to Buffalo. And the year that he went to Buffalo, the Canes made the playoffs again. And they've been in the playoffs ever since then, every year. About, don't quote me. Um, and then. Obviously, the Sabres haven't been in the playoffs since like 2004 or something. So that man has gone that a thousand career games with no playoff appearances. And I don't know, just trying to wrap my mind around that is kind of crazy. Yeah, that's super crazy. And not only that, I mean, he was rookie of the year his first year. I feel like he was, oh, yeah. he was the Calder, Calder Trophy yeah. Uh, winner. So yeah, um, it's it's pretty crazy that he... I mean, won that trophy and hasn't been to the playoffs yet. Like, what the hell? I mean, I I mean, I feel bad for him, but I do think it's eventually going to happen. I don't know if he's going to stay with stay ah, stay with the Sabers for the rest of his career, but at some point in his career, he's got to be traded to a contender. um, Whether it's at the trade deadline or whatever, he's getting paid like six mil a year or something like that. He gets paid pretty well. Um, but nine million a year. Nine mil. Okay, never mind. To like that just baffles me to like think about that poor guy. Like he's he's a great player, but he's never played in a playoff game. And Jack Eichel was pretty similar, but I mean Jack Eichel's yeah. a lot younger, so I don't know. But you know, cheers to him on a thousand career games, and it's not going to happen this season with the Sabers, but maybe next season. I feel like he's one of the best players to never play in a playoff game, and yeah, like in the NHL looking. history. I mean, I don't really know what the list could be either. I feel like someone might <laughs> yeah, beat us to that. Fault. Probably yeah. uh, probably in tomorrow or yesterday, yeah. whenever 
when it first comes out. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, Jeff Skinner was such an exciting player. To I mean, he still is. He's a fucking yeah. sniper. So, yeah. um, you know, applauds him to, to make him to a thousand games. A lot of players don't do that. Um, but yeah, man, that's that's a pretty pretty crazy stat, though. Yeah, I agree. All right, well, I know he's backstage and waiting. Uh, we've got our resident Coyotes fan, the only Coyotes fan in all of America, coming to speak on the behalf <laughs> of the, Coy- the Arizona Coyotes. He went to a game last weekend. He was there for IceCon, or not for IceCon, but he was there during that game. Um, he's going to share his thoughts on, you know, just being there in the atmosphere, being in what Tempe zone, I guess it's called now, not Glendale, but yeah, he's going to give us his reaction. So without further ado, here is T. Lou, Tyler, Tyler Lewis. How you doing, buddy? What's going on guys. Thanks for having me on, man. I'm super yes, excited. Sir. Yeah. yeah. I'm more excited to have on you on. Very, very fabled podcast I'm on right now. You know, yes. Like this I know. Yeah. Some, some say it's better than spitting chitlets. Some say there actually is a list out there that says that we are. I don't know where it is, but I made it up. Yeah, with our 200 followers. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, give us a little breakdown of like what you saw in Arizona. I know you yeah, kind of told so, me a little bit, but. So um, being a Coyotes fan, it's you're kind of. I've only ever seen them in one playoff series. It's 2020 playoffs when uh, it was like in the bubble you guys recall yep. when like darcy kemper was on his tear but ever since then they've just been like in a constant state of like is this team gonna be good at the beginning of the season <laughs> they were in fourth place in the nhl for like the first 10 games i was like oh my god like what is this yeah <laughs> not went away quickly but uh yeah it's 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 really weird because they don't play in a nhl arena they play in the uh asu Yep. Arena, Bullet Arena, which Bullet I was at. Uh, it, it's a really off, awesome atmosphere. I mean, oh, yeah. if you're there, the tickets are expensive. There's only 5,000 seats. So it's like actual yeah. real Coyote wow. stands, right? It's not like these people yeah. like, oh, after work, let's head over to the game, you know? Yeah. But I, honestly, I probably the best thing for them is to be like in the same area for the stadium where people can get off work and be like, oh, there's a game at seven. You guys want to go? You know, that's what that's what they need to do. But, yeah. you know, it, yeah. uh, it would break my heart to see them leave uh, the desert. I think, um, yeah. as Biz Nasty likes to say, hockey belongs in the desert. But, uh, you know, so if, if the powers of B, that be are listening to this podcast, uh, keep the coyotes in Arizona. <laughs> you I'll, heard if, it. If not, move them to Sacramento. I'll go to every single game. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but, uh, yeah. So just to talk about that game a little bit, uh, I have the privilege of knowing uh, the assistant equipment manager for the coyotes. So uh, I go oh, yeah. uh, probably I go to both the games in San Jose every year or try to. I only went to one this year, and then I try to get to uh, one game in in Arizona. I wasn't able to make it last year, but um, yeah, been to a handful of Coyotes games, and uh, it's kind of interesting. Every single game I go to, Clayton Keller scores at least one goal. So really, uh, that's uh, sick. I've never I've never not seen Clayton Keller score at first. Okay, so, well, let us know next time you go. We'll hammer the bet over. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, at least for sure. Score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, so I actually got to take a tour. Uh, so I went to the game on Saturday, the, uh, I think it was the 20, or Sunday, the 24th, and they lost to the Stars. You know, Stars are an absolute machine, and we don't yeah. have their number. I think they beat us every single time this year. So, that yeah. damn. Uh, they're a good team, man. I mean, yeah. Dude, being in the Central Division, I feel like that's like, that's a it's difficult a, place for, for the Arizona Coyotes. More often, just kick the shit out of them like we always do, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, but, you know, I mean, we're in a constant, like, it's like, we're so close because, you know, Cooley is good, really good. If you mm-hmm. have you got yeah. to hockey, you guys oh, yeah. uh, absorb this. Oh, no, year. we know. Yeah, we know who they are. Yeah. Um, we just haven't really, <laughs> they haven't been much of a talking point besides that they're leaving. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, but, yeah, Clayton and Keller. Michelli, too, or however you yeah. say his, yeah. his last yeah. name. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah. Josh Doan just came Josh Doan, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so he, uh, he just got called up from the Tucson Roadrunners, so. It's looking up, but um, yeah. get get to my point here. Uh, the next day, I was able to take a tour of the of the uh, the stadium. So mm-hmm. it's really strange. Like the locker room is fine and all that, but the players, you know, the players have their walk to the ice. The Coyotes have the longest walk to the ice in all of the NHL. It's it's like seriously, you have to walk down like a long corridor, turn a corner, walk down another corridor, and then you walk down onto the ice. 
It's like really strange. Right. It's, it's the only stadium like that in yeah. the NHL. But uh, yeah, so that was a little weird. And I was also watching the uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets practice that day. I actually met uh, Johnny Gaudreau. If you guys are a, a Johnny Gaudreau, no fucking way. Yeah, I got a picture with. Him. Uh, dude, no shit. That's <laughs> fucking <laughs> so sick. Johnny yeah. Hockey is like fucking yeah, one dude. of the biggest. He's one of the, the biggest American yeah, hockey legends true. ever, man. It was kind of funny the way it happened. I was, uh, I was hoping to meet him because I was like, I don't think there, I don't think there's a better passer in the NHL right now than Johnny. That's a hot take, I know, but maybe not this season. But previous seasons, he has been fucking lights out, man. Like when yeah. he was with the Flames. I mean, I'm a diehard Flames fan. When he was with the Flames, oh my gosh, dude, he was. I was the biggest like you- ride or die for for Johnny Hockey when. Yeah, and when he left the Flames, it was heartbreaking, man. Like, I, I think I cried that day. It was horrible. I was, like, I was sitting there. I was like, oh, man, we can, the Coyotes can get Johnny Gaudreau. And, you know, just like being excited for free yeah. agency. Coyotes aren't going to sign a free agent like that. But, no. you know, I was really hoping that we would maybe uh, snatch him up somehow. But it was kind of funny because I was really hoping to meet him. And I ended up being on the wrong side of the ice. So I was on the uh, on, next to the home bench. And he was over there and he took pictures or whatever. I was like, ah, whatever, you know, like, let's move on. Yeah. So outside of the arena, it's just it's like you're on the campus, right? So it's the football stadium, Mullet Arena, and then like this like parking garage. So right between the parking garage is where I'm waiting for my Uber. And I'm like standing there, I'm just hanging out, you know, waiting for the Uber. And I turn around and I'm like, is that Johnny Gaudreau right behind me? Like, just like the odds of that. Like I was hoping yeah. to meet him like, standing right behind me. Like yeah. I was so like dumbfounded. I was like, there's no way this is real. Like I was like, I had one of them like, hey, hey John. He was like, oh, what's up, man? I was like, hey, you mind if I get a picture with you? And he was like, oh, yeah, for sure. So I took a picture with him. And it was like, uh, this was like a week ago. I was like, hey, you know, you're only like seven assists away from being at 500 for your career. He was like, oh, no, I didn't know that. I'll have to get there. <laughs> oh, my God. No, yeah, we got an assist that night when the Coyotes, uh, yeah, that night. But yeah, it was pretty sweet. He probably thought well. of you. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure he did. You know, he's like, yeah, I gotta make sure I can. Like, Dude, speaking. We were speaking of the Frozen Four earlier. Speaking of that, Johnny Hockey has probably the sickest goal from the Frozen Four. I don't know if you guys saw it, but he played for Boston College. He has such a fucking dirty goal in the national championship game, too. I think one of the best goals in college hockey history. He won the Hobie Baker, too. I mean, yeah. dude, that guy has such a fucking amazing story. He's a fourth-round draft pick. Everyone he said he was too small. The finalists for the Calder? Or did he win the Calder? Yeah, he was a finalist for the Calder. Yeah. He had a hell of a hell of a rookie yeah. season. A rookie season or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, dude, one I mean, I think 2018, 2019 season, or one of those seasons he was with the Flames, he scored like 115, 116 points. I mean, he's yeah. he was elite with the Flames. Since he's left, it's been kind of on the downhill. I feel like, you know, I had some hard feelings with Johnny Hockey, but um, you know, I I, I forgive him for, for what he did. I know his wife yeah. wanted to move to the US, but you are missed by hockey fans <laughs> in Calgary, and everyone is on board yeah. with that. So honestly, like he was, like okay. So when I what this was back in like I don't know a couple of years ago. Every time I'd play NHL, I'd play as the Flames because I wanted to play with Johnny Hockey and Matthew Kachuk. But that would like that team of him, Sean Monahan, Kachuk. Like that was such a good team. I I'm sad that you guys nothing really Remember, came of it, but. Right, you know, dude. Old franchise in the NHL twenty whatever. I always that's my first trade. First thing I do when I get in there. Johnny, I think you grow. You're a you are a Arizona Coyote. <laughs> no, it's not much. It's not glamorous, but you get to wear the best jersey in hockey. You know, I okay. Give, I'll give it them is. the Coyotes Arnold. that. I'm glad that they changed it back to the one that's on your hat right now. Yeah, um, so am I. Same. Like the thing they've ever done. Yeah, a, I agree. I wish the Sharks would do copy that and. Take their old logo because that old logo is so awesome. But yeah. yeah, um, I don't know. I think I mean we so the the most that we talk about the Coyotes on this podcast is just about how they're probably leaving, or that we're just getting expansion. But I've said it before. I feel like hockey does belong in the desert. I think it's a good, um, you know, it's a good market to grow, especially. But man, they gotta. I mean, what's the deal? Aren't they? I saw something that they leaked like plans for a new arena or something like that. Yeah, so uh, they are planning to do a new stadium in uh, what, what? the Phoenix, isn't it? By yeah, I want to say it's in North Phoenix area or something. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm struggling to remember the exact name 
uh, Mesa. Mesa. So yeah. I think they're planning. No, I don't think that's right either. I can't remember. I don't know why I'm blanking right now. But yeah, they do have plans uh, in place. The last, they just did a vote recently and they got shot down. They were trying to build a stadium. Uh, not right now. Yeah. They're trying to, they're, they were building a stadium somewhere near Phoenix and that got shot down by the voters. They didn't want to pay yeah. for it. Yep. So, yeah. uh, they do have plans right now to build somewhere else in Arizona. And, and the ownership and um, the front office are very committed to staying in Arizona, which is great. You know, like, I'm also an A's fan, so I know what it's like when the team that you love doesn't want to stay that you yeah. want them to be. But, uh, yeah, that's, that was, that's like, rough for you. The reason I uh, was even like, I got to get on there and talk to you guys is because I was in the airport going to my flight to leave. And, like, you know how most airports, they have, like, the little, um, like, knickknack store or whatever. You can go, like, buy, like, a I love Arizona t-shirt or whatever. Yeah. You know, I go to San Jose and they'll have Giants uh 49ers yeah sharks gear yeah. right they, yep. they at the airport in arizona they had suns cardinals diamondbacks nothing for the coyotes not a scrap anywhere you can't That's even tell like, if you if you didn't know anything about hockey you wouldn't know like, you would never be like oh what is that yeah you know, they like, wouldn't even know yeah damn i mean yeah. speaking of a of a desert team similar to that the vegas golden i feel like their fucking logo and merch is everywhere around everywhere, that city yeah. yeah and that's the thing the is opposite. when when the Coyotes went to Arizona, they didn't start winning like instantly, you know? Yeah. The Golden yeah. Knights, you know, would they take one or two years to get really good? They took one year and they went to the yeah. finals. It took yeah, them eight seasons. Like yeah. it was the exact season they came in, they went to the finals. Yeah. So like, it's crazy. Yeah. I feel like the expansion stuff is tough to gain f- fans. And I feel like the Sharks kind of went through a similar thing. They always kind of sucked. Um, you know, we had a good run in the early 2000s and, early 2010s but you know we're where we're at um and that 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 arena is empty like there's no one there yeah i mean it's where they're like five bucks nothing nothing brings together uh, or builds a fan pace better than winning and the coyotes just haven't done much of that and when they did win right when they were okay like it was only a 50 game season because it was during covid and no fans go to the playoff games like that's where you build these fan bases at the playoff games before I, yep. oh my god the atmosphere there was crazy i, I can't wait to yep. go back next season like and when you just don't have that i mean before 2019 2020 playoffs they didn't have a playoff run in, since 2011 yeah so like, think about that it's just like who's gonna want to spend the money to go to the game and you're like you know and the coyotes this year were just the definition of like what team are you gonna get you know we yeah. go out there and we get blown out by the stars four to two score is a lot closer than the game actually was um being there in person but then yeah four days, four days later you're out there snapping the nashville predators win streak beating them eight to four like <laughs> how do you go from like playing two re- really good teams i think the stars are probably better than the predators but oh yeah um you know you, like you, there's a discrepancy like that and we could like we lost to the blackhawks twice in four days like you like you, the, the games you were supposed to win you're not winning and then you go and like sneak out one against a good team every now and again it's just not you know but they got feel a lot that with the flames yeah exactly <laughs> i wish so. i could feel that with the sharks but we don't win anything so <laughs> i so i have a question for you if there's no arena deal say by draft time do you think the coyotes are, are they out of arizona it's so hard to say just because like there's been no indication right I mean, I haven't seen anything the, the league. I don't think has really made a big comment on it. But uh, I know the league is open to sending them out to, like, St. Louis or uh, I heard Kansas City is a good one, too. Um, but, you know, I think that, that they're, everything's on, on the table right now just because they have nothing so far. Like, when you have no plans, yeah, I, I, solid plans in place, it's hard to be like, oh, you guys can just hang out in the college arena as long as you want. Like, yeah, they don't, you know, if you look at any – NHL post about the Coyotes. They're all saying like, "Oh, uh, well, they're not even a real NHL team. They play in a college arena." Like, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're kind I of know. Like, I feel bad for them. Yeah, right. Like if the Sharks didn't exist, the Coyotes would be the joke of the NFL, NHL. So yeah, no, they would honestly. Well, you kind of already are, in a sense. Everyone, yeah, clowns, even if. But honestly, like, what's tough about it is that you guys do have a good team that is coming up. Yeah, um, I feel like this season maybe you guys could crack the playoffs, but. I don't know. I yeah, it felt like that, but then it just didn't feel like that after like after yeah. the All Star break. We went on a fourteen game losing streak. 
Like you can't yeah, do that. No. Yeah. I just wonder like if there is an arena deal, I think Austin Matthews probably makes his way back to to Arizona at some point. I mean, that's a bold take of me, but I think if the Leafs keep missing the playoffs, I think Austin Matthews is getting his ass, packing his bags, and going to Arizona. Arizona Number one example, did you see all of the... Go ahead. I said he's going to go to Arizona, the dumpster fire who has not made the playoffs either. Like, what does that mean better? (laughs) I don't know. Hey, that's where he's from. (laughs) I know. Where's his boy? (laughs) <laughs> Keller is his boy, but you know he's they, from San Jose. Them, so in the All Star game, they were cooking together. They were, they were. Yeah, I think it'd be crazy. cool to see him play. I don't, I don't want him to be on the Leafs, so I'd rather him be on the Coyotes than the Leafs, honestly. But yeah, same here. And it's yeah. just like, uh, you know, I think I've talked to you when we're playing, uh, playing the EASHL. Um, uh, sorry, for anybody who doesn't know, that's part of uh, the NHL game yeah. franchise that game. Sean and I uh, frequent. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, we're <laughs> champions. We are, we are we're, insane. Yeah, elite cup champions. Two of us can say that. <laughs> Two of us can. <laughs> Sorry, Ant, if you're listening, you got cucked. Yeah, no, I always say uh, when I'm like on there, I'm like, man, like, I think we can get Austin Matthews, and they both laugh at me. But, you know, one day, that's the dream. We okay. got to get yeah. together. But, yeah, so I do know. I just hope that the uh, hockey stays out there. You know, I just, I love going to the games. It's not that bad of a flight. And, yeah. I mean, if they move, they're not going to still be called the Coyotes. It's kind of hard to call a team the Coyotes when they're in like. Yeah, I wouldn't call them the Coyotes anywhere else but Arizona, honestly. Exactly. I'd call them the Coyotes in Salt Lake. If they move to Salt Lake, there's, co- there's Coyotes in Salt Lake. So that is know. true. Yeah, there's Coyotes out here too. Maybe Boise Coyotes. Dude, that'd be pretty Holy cool. shit. <laughs> Boise gets an NHL team. That would be <laughs> fucking <laughs> bananas, dude. Yeah. Idaho Central Union would have to fucking put up. Ten billion dollars for that. Me, hey, they were playing at the Mullet Arena. What's stopping them? Hey. <laughs> the Coyotes have like six uh, draft picks in the first two rounds. So this year, it's gonna go down. But yeah, this year, yeah. Damn, good for them. So you know, this yeah. is Macklin Celebrini. You are a Coyote. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that ain't happened. Yeah, yeah sorry, gonna be, Sean. Gonna be a Chicago Blackhawk. I know. <laughs> It's going to happen, sadly. No, he's going to be a flame, guys. It's got to manifest it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Calgary flame. Come on, Macklin. Yeah, it doesn't what what are we? Is, we haven't really talked about that. I don't know a fucking another Macklin anywhere. I've never heard of someone called Macklin, Macklin? in my life. Macklin. Uh, I've heard of Max, but not, not a Macklin. Like, isn't I'm, that like a bird? Macklin? I don't think it's a bird. Mac, I don't know. We're talking about birds like, right now. <laughs> you, like, uh, you guys, I don't know if you guys are Parks and Rex fan, but uh, yeah, I am. Burt Macklin, FBI. Oh yeah, like, Burt Macklin. Yeah, yeah I think. <laughs> Burt Macklin. Oh my God, yeah, that was Andy Dwyer's. Yeah, uh, uh, dude, Chris I need to rewatch Pratt. that show. Yeah, Chris Pratt. All right, guys. Well, we're talking about Parks and Rec now, so thank you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler. Thanks for coming on, talking. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, of course, it. talking some sure. desert hockey. We need. You know, we need to spread the love for desert freaks. Um, and I think you're a good one to start with. So, you know, yeah. there, Gary Bettman, there are fans out there that do want the Coyotes to stay. Um, a few. So do we. You know, I think if anything, if you want to bring a team out to Salt Lake, you should just do another expansion draft. I think it'd be cool. Good for the game. Adding teams, adding, you know, more roster spots for these great players that are, you know, playing pretty deep in the AHL. But, Tyler, thanks for coming on. We appreciate you. Yeah. And, you know, I think that pretty much wraps up our show. Gally, do you have anything else you want to say? I don't know that we have any crazy no, stuff. No, I just, just follow. Go follow. Yeah, I just want to say nice to meet you, Tyler. Uh, I hope, hopefully the Coyotes stay in Arizona. I feel like the chances are kind of a 50 50 right now. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, go Flames. I know we got two weeks left of Flames hockey. And then, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, we get a good draft pick. Not saying number one. I hope we get top five. That would be make yeah. me delighted. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see if our frozen four bracket, uh, turns out to be perfect. Cause right now we yeah. do have the four, four teams picked yep. perfectly. So not a perfect bracket, but at least the, the yeah. first four. Our frozen four is solidified. So we'll see if that stays, but thank you everyone for listening. If you're up to this point, appreciate you. Appreciate you a lot. Um, go follow our Instagram. Just got that up and running and we'll see you guys next week. And you know, we're going to have a deeper, we're going to switch possibly to a two episode a week schedule when the playoffs start. Oh yeah. Um, not sure on the exact dates yet, but we will let you know once we know. But other than that, we'll see you guys next week. Peace.